Good afternoon, YouTube. We are here working on our 1984 Thundercraft 160, 16 foot, and uh, just uh, doing some buffing on it, getting some of the gel coat back into a newer status. And as you can see, um, it is looking a heck of a lot better where you can practically see somebody in the paint. That is just or in the cut gel coat, I should say, not paint. And that is just amazing to me. Of course, you can't see it right here. I gotta move it. Step out of the way. But you can see the trailer fender like a mirror. That is pretty awesome. And you can see that pretty much going all the way up along the side here. But anyway, <clears throat> now I'm doing this as simple as possible. A buffer with a wool pad and some one step compound McGuire's Marine RV. I use McGuire's, I've had really good luck with their uh, other products. I don't know if it's sitting in here at all or what I did with it. Uh, if it's even out, it's not, I haven't used it on the boat. Um, but I use a lot of McGuire's products when finishing paint on vehicles and this is the stuff right here ultra cut compound 105 this stuff is like a one-stop shop for me now i probably don't go as in depth and detailing as probably some people do uh but for me that it like i said it's like a one-stop shop i use it with a dual action polisher and uh mcguire's microfiber pads they're hook and loop pads they're only good for so long you can see how it's getting all toughy toughed up the hook and loop is not working so great anymore it starts letting go Whoops. but and i've just got a harbor freight dual action polisher i bought this years ago and let me tell you as much as i love harbor freight stuff this sucker's done very well with me it's gotten me this far many 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 vehicles many many hours of buffing and i mean hours multiple vehicles we're talking this one this one my honda the red truck waxing buffing you name it this thing's done it um all for me multiple 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 vehicles when i was doing my business in michigan but uh, this was taking a while to cut through the gel coats rough exterior uh, of course there's dust and dirt on there is what you're hearing it's not so bad but uh just the finish on it is dull as can be you won't see a reflection for nothing in this stuff i mean it's it's really really bad <clears throat> and you will see i mean reflection beautiful reflection to absolutely nothing so reflection no reflection and that's just how pretty much all the white gel coat on the boat is i did the the blue with the dual action polisher and the marine rv polish or compound and it has come out very very nice for what it is and that's exactly what you strive for is to make it as good as it is as good as it can be um <clears throat> now i've tried I know probably some people are going to freak out and go, you're not doing it right, you're supposed to sand it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't know. I tell you, it works for me. And uh, I was watching a guy on YouTube, he's doing the same thing. Uh, not with this product, but, you know, similar stuff. Wool pad, compound, was just going to town. And that's exactly what I'm doing because it is almost effortless. The only thing you're doing is moving that around, just letting that do its thing. And I'm using different speeds. I start out at 600 RPM and go up to 21, sometimes 2600 RPM. But uh, this is a master force from Menards. I've had pretty dang good luck with this so far. I've had it for a year, year and a half, two years. I haven't used it hardly at all. So I shouldn't say I've had good luck with it, but I like it so far. It feels stout, it's sturdy, it's heavy. And uh, it's got a lot of grip, I'll put it that way. I mean, it takes a lot more muscle to control this guy than it does the dual action polisher. But if you're familiar 
with how to use a per, uh, um, dual action polisher professionally, then you'll know some of the movements and some of the muscle work. It's not so bad, it's just a little bit more effort. But uh, it it makes this effortless. Just put the goop on a, on a little pads to start out at 600, work it in. Uh, for you know just to make sure it's worked into the pads not going to splatter all over then I bump her up to about 21 to 2600 and uh, I really let her go and I go until I can start to see that that mirror reflection and then I start backing off and just kind of working it <clears throat> working the polishing as the abrasive wears down it turns more into a polish with mer with um McGuire stuff so it uh I just kind of work in the polish and then bada bing bada boom mirror shine it's gorgeous so <clears throat> i've done a lot of the front here not a lot i've done some of it um as you can see and it's hard to see because of the angle that it's really at but you know you can see the rails reflection in the in the gel coat which is quite nice to have and then i've done Oh, it's just so hard to see a reflection versus not on such an angle like that. Anyway. But, uh, yeah, I, I've done most of this side already, just on the top here. <clears throat> Didn't go inside yet, and I did start to go up. Um... Uh, Trying to see it in the camera screen with my eyes. And I'm not seeing Jack. You can see how shiny it is here, and then here is where I stopped. So then I pulled the screws up or pulled the rail up a bit so I could get underneath it and whatnot. You can just see how shiny. Ooh. This boat's gonna be pretty well like new when I'm done. Unfortunately, these screws just spin, they don't want to come out. And there's no way to get up underneath with your hand and or anything, so I don't know. I don't even know how they got that stuff in there or what it's screwed into. I don't know. But uh, hopefully the screws go back in for the ones I took out. And then I'm, I'm going to see if I can get an LED version of this. I don't like halogen at all. An LED version of that would be nice. But uh, the bottom of the boat is already in really nice reflective shape. It's got some scratches. Maybe I'll try and get them out. I don't know. Um, I'm going to continue to do the blue though because the blue is not that great over here uh, I don't remember where I stopped I did a little bit of sanding here trying to get some of these scratches out uh, they're they're pretty deep in there but then you know you can just see it shiny so that's exciting that this puppy is going to be looking mint when I get done with it you know as mint as it can be so that's just that but uh I guess I'll go over what I did with it thus far with the boat. Uh, got the motor running. The uh, Got a new steering cable put in, so it's nice and easy moving on the steering. So that's awesome. I ended up having to buy an entire new kit, steering cable kit. The one that was in this boat was locked up. They had actually broken it, and then he had given me a spare one that's used and that one was messed up as well uh it was pretty well locked up i mean they they busted the casting apart trying to bust the steering loose and i also busted a tooth off on the gearing and then the spare one it was just it moves but it takes almost two hands on the steering wheel to get it to move at all so um that's just not gonna work so now we got that Nice and new, everything's lubed up. I even found a boot on Amazon. It's not exactly the right size. It's a really tight fit around here, and uh, it's not even fitted on that yet. But uh, I'm gonna see if that works enough. I don't know. I'm not too picky. This guy, we had to cut off, or not cut off, but cut the rivets, um, and had to dremel out the boat a little bit, because let me tell you, this, does not align up with that. I mean, you have to yank it back as far as possible. It's got to be as straight as possible getting it in. So it's a bit of a battle. Had to cut it, unfortunately. Uh, later date, I'll probably get some new boots. And I'm, it's not a terribly big deal to pull that out and put a new boot over it. But um, 
just don't have one right now a new boot so i'm not too terribly worried about it everything's greased up trim works uh all i did was hook the battery up and trim works so really gonna have to <laughs> put the battery charger on this thing to keep using it to crank the thing over and use the tilt and or the trim and whatever got new fuel pump diaphragm we uh it's not a head gasket but we ended up put swapping the uh, water jacket gasket is what i'm going to call it because uh, this engine has non-removable cylinder heads underneath this this plat this cover this is just a bolt-on plastic shroud right here but uh this the head or whatever you want to call it the plate itself here um there was water coming out of the spark plug right underneath the spark plug here and underneath this one as well so that's what the guy i'm assuming meant by blowing head gasket because we replaced the impeller we replaced uh the diaphragm got fuel running through it and then all of a sudden uh as water's flowing up and starting to try and spittle out of this guy uh water was coming out of underneath the spark plug so uh I'm hoping that's what he meant by a blown head gasket because the cylinder heads themselves underneath this cover are non-removable. I think they're part of the block casting, which is interesting. I like that. There's no blown head gaskets, right? <laughs> so, but water pump works. We had water spewing out of there, relentless, which is great because we didn't when we first bought it. Things running on its own for the most part. Could use some sea foam. So it's just what I'm going to do. The thing, we had it running on its own. Um, but it took a hell of a lot of cranking it and choking it and whatever else. And we were getting fuel through it now, though. So it, it was running on its own enough to where we could fire it right back up when you shut the key off. Uh, we'll just dump some sea foam in it. Hopefully it keeps carbs clean. And hopefully I don't have to mess with them and don't have to replace gaskets and crap like that yet. So that's the idea anyway. But, uh. You can see the blue is pretty faded on this side. Not near as bad as the other side was because this it's like this side didn't get that much sun because there's some reflection in the blue and the white. Uh, but the other side got all the sun on the top too. And it just, oh, it really did a number on the gel coat. But uh, like I said, that buffer, my gosh. I mean, I did this spot from here to here which is not that much just the edge to there with the dual action and that took forever a two three passes and you're taking up to up to five minutes per you know just working all that in and whatever else and oh my gosh 15 minutes for one little area forget about it that guy two three minutes for the same area heck of a lot easier just put a smile on my face minimal effort amazing results uh it's probably not new showroom new i don't know i don't know what new gel coat looks like um i'd have to bring this to a boat show and or something and compare i don't know i really don't so yeah but let me tell you i am covered head to, to toe in uh wool fibers now so that is perfectly wonderful it's like having cat fur in your mouth yeah bless it <laughs> but uh got new captain's chairs they're a little crunchy but uh at least we got captain's chairs they swivel you know and then they have a forward and back feature as well and uh i've got one sitting over here but uh And it's, I thought it was a burgundy, which wouldn't have bothered me so much, but brown's totally not the right color. So I have a vinyl dye spray paint that hopefully is the right color of blue, and whatever's brown is now going to be blue. Uh, we're going to have a nautical theme as per a boat. So I picked up these dual seats. They're no longer going to be dual seats i'm going to split them up i ordered hinges they're going to be new folding seats on pedestals there's going to be one in the back in the middle one in the middle on the front and obviously two captain's chairs and uh 
that's going to be the seating on the boat. We're probably going to do away with the upholstery up here, possibly. And, uh, yeah, so not too much to report. We haven't done a whole lot with the floor yet. There is a soft spot where my foot went through there. You can see it's splitting right there. And uh, thanks to a viewer, I saw what the underside of the floor looks like. And uh, I seriously hope the stringer ain't bad. It ain't bad. The, the, the stringer feels solid as a rock as can be um, right in the middle. But I guess once we get the floor up, we'll really know. But uh, And of course, it's fiberglassed in. The, the plywood floor is fiberglassed, so that sucks because it's not what I want to do. I, you know, throwing plywood down, sure, not a big deal, right? Oh, I got to fiberglass it? Oh, that's going to take forever. <laughs> I want to get this thing out on the water, you know, pretty much just after opening season. Uh, so I want to have this ready by opener. That's the goal. Um, that way... Which is not that far away. We're less than a month away now. Well, about a month, but a little less than a month. So, uh, got some work to do, but I, I'm an automotive detailer at heart. So, and a mechanic. But, uh, automotive detailer, I, I look at stuff and I see the diamond in the rough. You know, this boat looking at it looked actually pretty dang good. Other than, you know, the gel coat being faded, but the interior didn't... Was it all in shambles and pieces and everything else when I got it? Uh, but uh, the more we touched it, the more we worked with it. It's like, uh, yeah, well, the interior's pretty much got junk. And, uh, but the gel coat's coming out beautiful, I think, for what it was. And the camera's not quite doing it justice. I mean, it's looking really good right now so <clears throat> very happy with that trailer is rewired so that's nice and uh i mean i bought new lights and rewired it it wasn't like i bought it rewired um that was the first thing i did when i got the boat but um still i mean i mean i scrubbed the windshield but i gotta rewash it again because pressure washing really splattered everywhere but i uh, got a new steering column the whole nine yards with that steering cable kit uh the linkages here aren't frozen and uh, i like i said i want to do as minimal work as possible i want it done enough to enjoy fishing this season this summer and then you know maybe fall maybe next spring will be the goal of completely redoing the floor i don't know I just want it done enough that I can enjoy it this season. Um, Fourth of July, that kind of stuff. Got family hopefully coming up, and he likes fishing. So well, let's do some fishing. We got a boat now. So um, engine runs great. Runs like a dream. Sounds great. So um, just continue to keep an eye on it, tinker with it. I picked up a temp gauge for it's sitting on the dash. I was surprised as I was washing these steps off. Yeah, they actually look really, they look nice when they were really wet. They have that nautical wood look to them. And then they dried and they kind of faded looking. But uh, we're probably just going to restain them because they seem pretty solid yet. So we'll restain them. They'll look beautiful. And to be honest, if I could do hardwood floor look in the boat, I would. Um, that would be amazing, I think, to have hardwood uh floor uh i'm a sucker for that i guess i, I want to keep some of the blue but just the wood floor i think it'd just be amazing but uh that's just me i don't know but uh go over some of the stuff i got which i guess it, well it's in the back seat now Ugh. My door handle broke, of course, so I had to put the old one back on. But I'll show you the spray paint I got here. And from what I found online for pictures, that this looked like it would pretty well match beautifully, but I could be wrong on that. <laughs> um, oh, can I even get it off? One handed, there we go. I guess we're gonna. 
pinch a piece of something and see see what she looks like. And I suppose I'll just shake it up here for a minute. Um, what else did I do? Or me and Dad do? We did one steering cable together, and then I did the other two by myself. Um, I, I take that back. No, the other, the last one myself. I'm thinking. There's three cables now that we've done. The, the, the bolts had two there, one in the boat. So we did the first two together, and then I did the last one myself. Oh, we got new fuel line, new primer bulb for the fuel tank. So that's good. Do I got a spool of wire there? I'm gonna try and redo some of the wiring in here. I got to get a new socket back here for the light because this one's corroded all the hell. And then the light up front isn't working, but like I said, I wanted to do an LED one. I just needed, I just needed to look and see what the holes were because uh, I just want something that bolts right back up. That'd be great. Otherwise, if not, uh, Walmart actually has the identical replacement for this and the one in the back. So that'd be good. Uh, I, I would ideally like to do a stereo in here. That's probably kind of dumb, to be honest, though. But maybe not. I don't know. Um, I've only got one battery. It's not a marine battery. It's a truck battery. That's working great. But uh, I don't necessarily... Uh, I don't know. I don't really want a second... to have to buy a second battery right now to run a equipment. I just don't think it's terribly necessary. So, but... Uh, See what it says. Do I need that? No, I don't. And of course, as that dries, it's probably going to be a little <laughs> different. But it's not. It's not too far off. Not too far off at all. So, like I thought, that was going to be pretty well perfect enough to be honest i mean i was thinking about the sidewalls and what that would look like that's pretty damn close can't gotta admit so i will be painting the back of the seats and the middle stripe in the back i'm not i'm not going to touch those ones those ones should be fine but uh that's how this boat's going to look and uh not too terribly far away just got to either patch the floor for now or something because I just want to get it ready for opener and enjoy some fishing this summer. So uh, we are only working on the weekends mechanically and whatever else inside wise just because dad lives a little, little ways away. So I'm not going to have him come down and he works during the week. So um, I work from home. So I get to look at this every day if I wanted, but uh yeah, so I hope y'all enjoyed a nice update video. I did one previously. It was 30 minutes long. Be glad I spared you. <laughs> this one's getting close to be 30 minutes, but it's a hell of a lot better than the last one. But uh, so stay tuned for more because it's really going to change and it's really going to look good. I am excited to continue buffing the boat, making it look nice. I don't know how shiny I can get it. Like, I, I don't know what new gel coat looks like to know whether if it looks like clear coat. You know, I could see every, I could see every hair on my face in the paint or whether or not it's just going to look shiny and you get a little reflection. Don't know. But anyway, so I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff because uh, there's been plenty of updates I guess to the boat and I did to remember them all. I don't know, but there's the gauge temp gauge I got to find the stinking Temperature sensor I gotta ask dad if he moved it somewhere because I had it sitting up on top of the engine And then we worked on the engine and then I pulled the boat up to run it After putting the impeller in and I haven't seen the stinking temp sensor since because I pulled it out to show dad what it looked like and well now it's gone. It's great. <laughs> Love that. So anyway, I suppose um, I did end up having to permatex this gasket. Permatex, yeah, this gasket. Um, for some reason, this this plate must be warped a little bit, 
or something right underneath that sp those spark plugs. Uh, it probably means it was overheated at one point, but um, the thing's got good compression. I think there was maybe the middle cylinder was 135, 140, and 140. So not bad compression, and uh, for some reason with the new gasket, it was still ever so slightly weeping water underneath the spark plug. I haven't run it since, so I can't say anything yet. But I'm very much hoping that it's done leaking and we will be good to go. And if you buy this book for your outboard, I don't like it at all. Um, it is nothing like a Haynes or a Shilton manual. Everything is so hard to find. Hard. Very, very, very hard to find. And it looks like it'd be straightforward. But when you go to look for something, you spend 15, 20 minutes just looking and looking and looking and looking and looking and then maybe you'll find it oh i hate it but if there's something in it at some point we might need i don't know then if I, it might be worth it but at the moment it pisses me off i hate that book but uh apparently someone I mean, one of the reviews on the book from it i got it off amazon it was uh you know the wiring diagrams were spot on and whatever and cool yipty doo da day this thing's been, been rewired pretty much by some wiring enthusiasts and at least i thought it looked a lot worse when i got it obviously it's all hanging around but um, the battery connections are a little less than ideal but uh i've got terminal blocks and everything i was really going to do it up nice and i want everything strung up so it's not hanging down you know because it was all just laying down here i want it tucked up underneath and looking pretty so I'm picky that way. Even though it's a cheap boat, we're doing cheap fixes, I want it looking nice. <laughs> so, alrighty guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for the final product of this season. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. God bless.